us to another episode on ASUG 12 exams. So this is the 14th episode in a series of episodes where we are focused on the November 2022 science paper team. So if you haven't seen the last 13 episodes, please check out on our YouTube channel. So let us look at question C1 from section C where you are expected to answer two questions out of three questions and each question carries 10 marks. Question C1. In an experiment to find the concentration of a solution of sodium hydroxide 0.1 mol per decimeter cubic or molality of hydrochloric acid was learned from a bullet into a conical flask containing 25 centimeter cubic of aqueous sodium hydroxide until neutralization took place. 20 centimeter cubic of the acid was required. Question A, Loma numero 1. Name a suitable indicator to use in this experiment. Then Loma numero 2, describe the color change that would be observed when neutralization occurred for the indicator you named in A, Loma numero 1. So, the type of indicator that you are going to choose will determine your description of the color changes. There are four types of indicator that you normally use in titration. So let me just list them here. So we are trying to answer Loma numeral 1. So if you choose to use litmus paper, if that solution is acidic, the color will be red. If it is in alkali, the color will be blue. So in your description, you need to describe the change of color from red to blue. Then, if you are using phenol, phenolphthalein, The color change is colorless to pink or lead. This is indicator number two. Indicator number three, if you are using methyl orange, the color change is from red to yellow. So I'm putting this for so that you are able to follow me when I'm explaining. Blomo, Theo, Theo Bloom. The color change is from yellow, which is when the solution is acidic to blue. So depending on which one you go with, it's going to determine how you are going to answer Loman in Melon two. So you have to choose one of these. So I'm going to go with phenolphthalein. So what will be the change? So let us go and look at the question. So what we have, we have hydrochloric acid which we are learning in a bullet into a conical flask containing aqueous sodium hydroxide. So the solution that we have initially is aqueous sodium hydroxide, then we are adding hydrochloric acid. So this is an alkali solution. So if you are using phenolphthalein, we are going to start with the alkali solution which will be pink or lead. Then as we add hydrochloric acid, it is going to change towards colorless. So neutral is colorless and acidic. You see colorless. So the moment it loses its color from pink lead to colorless, at that point, which is known as at the equivalence point, then we stop adding hydrochloric acid. So the description as hydrochloric acid is added to 
sodium hydroxide the color of the solution changes from pink stroke red to colorless thus the description of the color change that would be observed in this process so if you are using litmus paper it will change from blue to red the moment it reaches red you would have reached at the point of equivalence or equivalence point where neither the solution is acidic nor uh, basicity so what you are saying is there is no excess acid or excess base that in equal amount in terms of what is required to reach the neutralization point or in other words they are in proper proportion or equivalence that's what you need to know so i needed to explain that so that you are with me we move to question b write down the chemical equation for the reaction that takes place in the conical fraction so we need to write the equation so let me go to beam so we are reacting hydrochloric acid with sodium hydroxide now we have sodium hydroxide in the conic flask and we are adding hydrochloric acid which is aqueous then we are going to end up with sodium chloride which is aqueous then plus we have water so this will be the equation that we are asking to do which is this chemical equation that we are required to do so if you look at this chemical equation we have Two hydrogen, two hydrogen. We have one oxygen, one oxygen. We have one chloride, one chloride. Then one sodium, one sodium. So it's a, a balanced equation already. Let us look at the next question. Question C. How many moles of hydrochloric acid were used in the experiment? So we need to find the number of moles that were used in this experiment. So we know that concentration is given by number of moles divided by volume and the volume should be in decimeter cubic. Where C is the molarity is equal to N over V in decimeter cubic. We are looking for N. So N is equal to by just crossing multiplying. We multiply V multiply by M. We have M v then n times 1 is n so what we need to do is look at the volume of hydrochloric acid so for hydrochloric acid what quantity do we need we needed this quantity of hydrochloric acid in terms of volume so this one we convert it to a decimeter cubic so the volume will be the volume given which is 20 divide by 1000 because there are 1000 centimeter cubic in 1 decimeter cubic so we're going to end up with 0 0.02 decimeter cubic as in our volume then what is molarity so the molarity of hydrochloric acid is this one which is the same as 0 0.1 moles per decimeter cubic so m is equal to 0 0.1 then you can find the number of moles to be equal to this one is 0 0.1 then multiply by 0 0.02 what you notice here we are going to end up with 0 0.002 moles what you notice here this is moles per decimeter then multiply by 0 0.02 moles decimeter cubic this decimeter and decimeter cancels then we end up with just the moles and see this is the one that we have so here 
we use 0 0.002 moles by using this formula. Then we look at Loma numeral 2 of C using the equation in e, B, which is this one, calculate the number of moles of sodium hydroxide used. So we have an equation, then we know the number of moles of hydrochloric acid that we used. Then we are required to find the number of moles of sodium hydroxide that we used. Let us go to the equation. So if you look at the equation, we discover that when we have one more of sodium hydroxide, we need one more of hydrochloric acid to produce one more of sodium chloride and one more of water. So if here we use the 0 0.002 moles, then here should be also 0 0.002 Two moles, then also produce this one because uh, we maintain the mole ratio like in that. So, how many moles of um, sodium hydroxide did we use or was used? Is uh, this one, which is uh, 0.002 moles. That's uh, the answer. Remember, C1, we are just from finding it to be 0 0.002 moles. Then we find this one, it will also be 0 0.002 moles of sodium hydroxide based on the fact that we are using these mole ratios. So, if you use this one to reach a neutralization, we need the same mole of sodium hydroxide. That's what we need. Because we are using this and this more ratio will guide us on what will be required. Question in Loma numero 3 of SIM. Calculate the concentration of sodium hydroxide in moles per decimeter cubic. So, we know the volume of sodium hydroxide is this one. Then we know the number of moles of sodium hydroxide which was used then you can find concentration using this formula we know the number of moles then we know the volume the volume is in this one then we're just from finding the number of moles so let us go where the space and answer this question so loma numero three concentration is equal to number of moles divided by volume the number of moles is this one, which is 0 0.002. Then we have the volume. Let me use this space. The volume is 25 centimeter cubic. We convert this to decimeter cubic. So the volume now becomes 25 divided by 1000, which will give us 0 0.025 decimeter cubic as our volume. Then we divide here by 0 0.0. 25 decimeter cubic then we divide by moles we are going to get 0 0.08 moles per decimeter cubic which is the same as 0 0.08 molality so that's in the concentration Question D, Loma numero 1, give a reason why the bullet was used to determine the volume of the acid and not a measuring cylinder. So why was the bullet used instead of a measuring cylinder? That's what the question is asking us. So the answer is, this is because a bullet is used to add controlled volume of liquid with the degree of accuracy of up to 0 0.1 centimeter cubic. On the other hand, the measuring cylinder is not used to get the exact measured value, but an approximation. So we can't use the measuring cylinder because it is used to get approximation volume of liquid. So the answer would be something like this. This is because a bullet is used 
to add controlled volumes of liquids to a given solution with degree of accuracy of 0.1 centimeter cubic while the measuring cylinder is just used to measure approximating volume of liquids so in this case we are looking for the exact measure not an approximation because we are going to miss getting the correct volume which we require for us to reach the exact equivalency point so this is how you answer this question Roman number 2 of dim how was exact 25 cm cubic of sodium hydroxide transferred into the conical flask so we are looking for the exact volume how was it transferred so it was transferred using a pipette that what we used because a pipette is used to get and transfer the exact volume and those exact volume are 10 cm cubic and 25 cm cubic hence the pipette is the best in apparatus that was used in this experiment to transform sodium hydroxide to the conical flask so the model answer is the pipette was used to transform the sodium hydroxide into a conical flask this is because it is a graduated tube filled with suction and used for transferring exact volume of liquids such as 10 cm cubic and 25 cm cubic of liquids okay so this is the model answer that you can give thank you for joining me in this episode i could have taken a bit longer but i wanted you to get the details on how you answer this question correctly so if you get my explanation you should be able to take less than half the time that i've taken to answer this question in full so join me in the next episode as i look at question c2 in detail